welcome back and welcome back to the traditional end of year gauntlet where I try to see as many of the last little straggler films from 2022 before compiling my end of the year lists and um, this one is a latecomer in every way not just in that it's kind of coming at the end of my review slate but it joined the list of contenders for ones I wanted to watch and review very late in the game because I had not heard anything about it. I did not know this movie was coming. I did not know, I don't know if it even received a theatrical release around here. And uh, as such, it was in danger of kind of slipping through the cracks and flying under the radar, which is a shame because this is a very important movie. It's talking about uh, a very important piece of modern day history, something that has had um, meteoric effects on the culture. And I, you can kind of understand it um, because it's a, it's a film opening against you know, big budget films and a lot of smaller movies aren't, you know, getting big theatrical releases anymore, just enough to make them Oscar worthy. Uh, but, you know, during the holiday season, you know, people are more likely to go see Avatar than they are this. And I think that's a disservice to this film because it's important. It's an important movie. And I think it's one, it's telling a story that needs to be told. So for everybody who doesn't know, um, this is, well, let's back up. So you may recall that a couple years ago, um, a news story broke, uh, accusing Harvey Weinstein, a fairly powerful and influential producer in Hollywood, the head of Miramax Films, uh, of extreme sexual misconduct, um, sexual harassment, sexual abuse, out and out rape. And this is an article that shone a light on the extreme um, mis, mis, not misuse, um, the extreme mistreatment, sorry, my brain's a little, a little slow this morning. The extreme mistreatment of women in the entertainment industry. Um, it brought down Weinstein. He ended up going to jail um, and is, uh, has other charges still waiting to be leveled against him. It spawned uh, the Me Too movement as well as several others. It's led to the creation of new laws of a lot of industries kind of cleaning house and uh, a lot of people in a lot of different industries coming forward with similar stories. I know that um, during the lockdown, as kind of an offshoot of the Me Too movement, uh, there was one in the wrestling industry where a lot of female wrestlers and uh, employees came out with stories of some really disturbing um, tales of, again, sexual misconduct, sexual abuse, threats, harassment, um, and it's led to just a lot of industries looking at the way they do business and looking at what they have been very permissive of or ignorant of, either um, knowingly or unknowingly, and kind of, the fact is this article has had long-lasting effects that are still being felt today. So this film is the story of the two reporters from the New York Times, played by Zoe Kazan and Carrie Mulligan, who first get wind of the story and the process they had to go through in order to investigate it, in order to get people to come forward, and uh, in order to corroborate the information. So it is a procedural film about the writing of this article. And I, I, I'll, I'll say this, um, 
I think this movie's biggest strength is one of the reasons it took a little while for me to get into it. I had a hard time um, connecting with the film in its early goings because this is not a movie in the traditional sense, meaning it's not following kind of your traditional tropes, character arcs, and narrative structure. As I mentioned, it's a procedural film, meaning that the emphasis is not on character or character development or a traditional three-act structure or anything of that nature. The emphasis of this film is what they did, how they did it, and how events kind of all lined up in order for this monumental article to be written and released. So, we're introduced to our two main characters very early on, but we're not really told much about them. We don't know a lot about who they are, what they're doing, why they're doing it. And again, this is, this is all by design. And the difficulties I had in kind of connecting with the film in these early goings is more uh, a result of conditioning by the entertainment industry about how a film is structured and how characters are presented. In any other film, you'd be introduced to the characters, you'd get a real feeling for who they are, what their wants, needs, and desires are. They're given some kind of character arc, a complication that needs to be overcome, something that by embarking on this, uh, this mission, uh, it will somehow help them resolve the unresolved issues in their own life, and they'll come out of it better people, and blah, 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 blah. And the film doesn't do that. It gives us enough background just kind of know who they are and then just doesn't really bother with it anymore it's just kind of these are two women they're not on some giant mission they're not on you know they're not trying to solve some some deep personal issue in their own life trying to come to terms with something bad that happened to them no they're two women very dedicated doing a job and that's what they're doing it's about the job um, and once I kind of got into the flow of the story, I got more invested in it as a film. Uh, so it did take me a little bit, but again, that is, that is by design. The closest thing to, I guess, a character arc is Carrie Mulligan's character is one of the reporters who broke a lot of stories about, uh, Trump's sexual misconduct and his harassment of women that came out while he was running for the presidency in 2016 and of course we all know how that turned out it didn't turn out to mean much of anything so uh carrie mulligan feels a bit beaten down and tired feeling like she broke this really important story and nothing happened you know he still got away with it not only did he get away with it he became the president, so he got rewarded for it in some cases. So, the again, the closest thing we have to a character arc is that um, jumping back on and taking on a similar story and bringing down someone else powerful who's gotten away with all these terrible things is a little bit of a redemption arc. But I think that's more incidental because, again, the movie is not concerned with traditional character arcs or or story structure or anything of that nature, it's concerned with giving you the information on how all of this came about. And I think that's, that is actually the, the best choice for this type of material, trying to give it to you as objectionally, uh, objectively as it possibly can. And I think that is the best way to go. I think if you've gone another way with it and you tried to do a more traditional film or storytelling style, I think the weight of what they did and the difficulties that they faced and the challenges that they had to overcome would have felt more pat and more contrived as opposed to a real life struggle that 
uh, these women had to go through. Um, as a result, it's kind of hard to critique this film in terms of normal film criticism. Uh, I, it's very hard for me to critique the acting in because there are no big standouts. There are no big standout, eye-popping, attention-grabbing performances. This is a cast mostly made up of character actors and lesser-known performers who are all striving to tell an honest story. And again, I think that is for the best. This is a true ensemble piece. This film feels genuine. It feels real. The performances feel grounded and textured and like real people having real conversations. As opposed to, again, let's say you had done this movie and you had hired a big name star. You hired Angelina Jolie or Nicole Kidman or... Um, I don't know who else, but somebody else, a name above the title kind of actor to fill these roles. And it's not, not saying anything against any of those actors I mentioned. They're fine actors. But you kind of get the feeling when a movie does that, the focus is more on the actor than it is on the story. You know, especially in a piece like this, which would very easily be up uh, for Oscar consideration. This is definitely a prestige picture for some big name actor. And I think the filmmakers didn't want to go that route. I'm making an assumption here because that puts the attention on the actor and not on the story, not on the, uh, the true heroism of everybody involved for doing what they did. And I do mean everybody involved. This film gives you a real feeling, not just for the bravery of these two reporters, but for all the women who had to come forward and how difficult that was. I think one of the great things this film does is it, it for, for a lot of people, I think it may answer one of those age old questions and one of those you know, kind of pat criticisms when things like this came out. I remember a lot of people saying, they even bring it up in the film, like, oh, well, if they, you know, if they were harassed or raped or all of this, why didn't they come forward at the time? And this film does a great job of showing that that's not as easy as it sounds, not just from the standpoint of a person who has been assaulted in such a way as Weinstein did to these poor women. Um, first of all, uh, you, you kind of even discounting the social aspect of it, you know, of that stigma of, you know, fearing people aren't going to believe you. There is also this, um, the difficulty of coming out and accusing a very powerful man in an industry and what that will do to your career. Uh, Ashley Judd, one of the people who he had, um, he had assaulted, plays herself and kind of recounts what he did to her when she attempted to come forward. And that's the other thing. It also shows that people did try to come forward. And what they got for their troubles was, you know, blackballed or not believed. Talks about Rose McGowan uh, attempting to come forward. And every time she did and, the, and the, the interviews she gave, nothing happened. No one believed her. So it's a, it's a huge issue to try to get people to dig up very painful memories from their past, uh, even if it is for the greater good. And I think, again, one of the things this film does exceptionally well is it really gives you a feeling for what everybody involved with this story must have gone through, what they had to go through in order to get this information out there and stop a truly monstrous human being. Uh, it, it also kind of shines a light on some of the tactics that Weinstein used when he heard that the the report was coming. I, I remember hearing a story from Kevin Smith, who was a big name over at Miramax at the time. A lot of his views skew movies were released through Miramax, and he said, I got a call from Harvey Weinstein um, uh, just before the article hit. And he was saying, oh, how you doing? Oh, you know, you know, we should do Dogma Part 2. You've always wanted to do Dogma Part 2. And Smith was like, oh, that's that sounds cool. Wow, I wonder what brought that on. And then the very next day, 
the article hit and he realized, okay, he was trying to get people on his side. He was trying to promise them all sorts of goodies and all sorts of favors if they would kind of back him up and say, oh, no, Weinstein's a great guy. And um, we see examples of that, of his office trying to sweet talk these women and trying to offer them things to kind of keep their silence and go, oh, no, Harvey's a great guy. And, you know, it, you know obviously he was a, one of the biggest scumbags that ever walked the earth. One of the, the, the biggest scumbag, of course, being in the White House at the moment. Not this moment, but at the moment this was done. Um, I guess if it, it, some people might give the criticism that it is not necessarily a fair and even-handed um, narrative. It, it, it is kind of just their story, but you can't be fair and even-handed with a shithead like Weinstein. He's evil. He did these things. He was a terrible human being. And kind of like doing a film about Hitler. Like, I don't care what Hitler's motivations were. He was he was evil, and Weinstein is the same way. So, I don't think that is a that is a valid valid uh, criticism. On the whole, though, uh, this film is thought provoking. It's interesting. It's engaging. It and it shines a light on again probably one of the most important news stories of the, of the last decade, uh, and just what had to go into that. So. I think this is an important film, and I think this is a film that needs some attention shined on it and needs people to check it out, um, lest we forget. I mean, I know that sounds very cliche, but lest we forget what this, uh, what goes on in this film and what, what we're trying to, pers uh, what this film's trying to prevent. So I highly recommend it. I say it's worth seeking out. You can find it free on Peacock. You know, so uh, you don't even have to, to 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 pay for it. You can you can watch this movie, but watch this movie because I think it needs the audience, and it uh, more than that, the audience needs it. So do yourselves a favor and go check this out. So okay, I think that's uh, that's all I really can say about this one. Um, so let's uh, let's wrap up here. So final grade for she said. I'm going a solid A. Solid A on this one. Took a little while for me to get into, but once I did, I was completely there for it and really, really impressed with all parties involved. So great bit of filmmaking, great bit of storytelling. Highly recommend it. Go check it out. Okay, so there we have it. So another film in the gauntlet down. So thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for coming along for the ride. And as always, drive safe, and I will see you at the movies.